Okay, slight burly here with Mr. Roberto Sharp, my teacher. First one I want to bring up is Bagua. There's been a lot of things about Bagua walking the circle around your opponent. What would be Bagua in the fight to you? Would, would it even like to, to the naked eye, could someone even say, oh, that was Bagua right there? Or would they see Maybe it? in a slow motion uh, reproduction of it. Uh -huh. But the Bagua is a principle. It's, it's in, in the, the principle of change, of constant change. So really it's about seeing how well the person adopts to change and makes the enemy change in a bad way. That would, to me would be the epitome of a Bagua strategy uh -huh. of fighting. Now Bagua Jan is the, is the palm eight, eight diagram palm boxing. And that would seem to me that according to the different stories of the lineages that already are there, some Bagua men would be strikers some Bagua men would be uh, grapplers, and others would be kind of like um, uh, takedown artists, you know, knockdowns, right? So the Bagua's uh, training tends to foster a sense of, of movement while uh, doing something, as opposed to standing still and doing it, which, uh, which can be very, which as we see now in modern sports uh, martial art, uh, UFC style fighting and the like, it's the man that can do it on the move that tends to do better than the guy who needs a situation where things are uh, brought to him. Oh, so it, would, it wouldn't be like Lion holds the ball. No, or, but Lion holds the ball. The but, no, it wouldn't be like that to be in, in, in outside the gap. Uh -huh. But once you see a, a particular grappling maneuver, like uh, for example, the famous um, fireman's carry, God, it looks like Lion holds the ball. You know, um, if you look at the different manners in which we get uh, uh, neck cranks and snap downs and single legs, you can you can you can see that there is um, training from our forms to be able to do those movements. But now the Chinese um, culture has a way of being very polite and discreet when introducing information like this. So lion holds the ball is a very poetic way of saying, not saying, attack the neck. <laughs> oh, okay. so, so it doesn't, in, in real fight time, it doesn't look as pretty. Then. No, it cannot. It cannot. It cannot. It cannot. Why cannot it look pretty? Because the other man is trying to defeat you. Ah, so no participation. Right. I mean, even in our push hands, in our Bagua style push hands, you'll see the intimation of the full move is almost impossible with the other man being present. Okay. So, Somebody said it, you know, in a way that if you see the full technique, you know it wasn't right. You know, so, uh, so yeah. you know it wasn't a real fight. Well, let's <laughs> take let's take boxing. We, we all, I think, most people can see a shadow boxing. You can go to the, a boxing gym and see a wonderful shadow boxer. But is he the champion of the gym? Mm -hmm. You can't do what you want without adopting what you do to what the other man is, is doing at you. Okay. There, so, there's a thing like with 52 blocks, there's a lot of moves, so there's a, a belief that in the real-time fight, me confronting you, I could... No, those are conditioning drills. Oh, you conditioning see, I, drills. Conditioning drills, and among the many things that we've learned um, from is that people who want to be warriors, want to live a warrior lifestyle, need to condition themselves for um, specific uh, flexibility and specific uh, reaction. And uh, that reaction time, um, most untrained people have a very big reaction time to what, when things are distressing them. Someone doesn't like you, your temperature goes up, your, your demeanor changes, your shoulders rise. A trained person is going to know those things happen and not allow them. So they're very, you know, used to being So there's, <laughs> so there's more things happening to the technique than just the technique. Sure, alone. the flexibility of your shoulders and your neck and your wrist and your um, orientation of what you do with your hands, that's what our training is for. And that's why it may look almost like dancing or like yoga or other arts that are known for um, being good for you but not necessarily being, you know, fighting marks, right? But in our case, we're trying to do we're trying to do all of the above through our fighting arts. If not, that belongs to 
soldiers. Soldiers don't care how they will live. They're supposed to go in there kind of expecting to die, yeah. right? But a martial artist, a warrior, is trying to preserve and conserve life, his life, your life, her life, everyone's life. And your training is life, life enhancing. So if I can get my elbow, you know, across my chest and behind my back and so on, this is good health, okay. good shoulder flexibility. But when it comes to the fight, it's almost a conversation. So you have to be into it, you know, open to what the other man's doing exactly. instead of being your Yeah, you world. can't have. In fact, uh, I would say that's a real um, Tai Chi, Chuan's uh, different songs and lectures talk about losing, being, being in the position of losing yourself. I heard a minister today on television, a Christian minister, say that when in the Bible God confronts the devil, it's always the devil that goes first. Mm. You know, God doesn't do anything like that. He doesn't. He doesn't. He does. He's not offensive in this preacher's way of saying it. God has the power to let you try it. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and I, I right away I focused. I, I went to you know how that relates to Tai Chi saying uh, they. They, they attack first, but we arrive first. But you must attack the Tai Chi master for, for you to get the response. There is no Tai Chi offense. Okay. And there's also been some as far as footwork. How, how long have you been a martial arts man? Uh, it's embarrassing to say how long. Maybe most of my life. Most of your life. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a notion going on with the whole for two and everything I've learned from you and Wilson that in the fight, a man has to stand his ground. You don't move around. Yeah, I think that's a real misunderstanding of the reason we have feet uh, and brains. And uh, the, the, even the most, um, let's say, for the sake of, of making a statement about strength, who's the strongest, there's a strongman contest out there. I'm not a member of that strongman contest, you know, culture. Um, uh, and I'm sure it, it has many, many um, benefits to it. In other words, being stronger, who can prove that they're stronger? Well, I guess it's who can stand their ground the best and the longest. Uh, we have some of that in terms of wrestling, uh, or you know, even a ancient wrestling, who could hold the ring. Or in sumo, you see the two men mm -hmm. clash, and then one of them, the loser, is somehow manipulated out of the, out, out of the ring. Um, without necessarily having anybody hitting each other, but they're basically slamming their bodies into each other. But when you're fighting for keeps, you do anything necessary to win, which may mean running, which may mean hiding, it may mean climbing, it may mean um, digging into something. So it all implies to me extreme footwork and bodywork movement, much okay. more like a, a, a chimp or a gorilla than a uh, a uh, Hercules type. Uh, so, yes, because there, there's almost like a rock, paper, scissors thing where it's like my trophy foot beats your bagua. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about that? Is it, is it the style that fights or is it men that fight? Well, I think the answer is the latter. It's yes. the man that makes the fight. And uh, styles and styles and names of styles are almost a, a, a burden right. in getting it simple, getting yourself into a situation where you have faith in what you're learning learn it okay. and it makes sense to you because you're a logical person you don't you don't put your logic aside you try to understand that well to, to let's say we take uh, boxing initially being told to just like bob and weave and move your head and you know um, put on this mouthpiece and wear these trunks and put on these big shoes and run run miles and miles a day may seem like but that's not boxing that's not fighting I need to learn to beat somebody in you know six seconds the guy has you jumping rope doing sit-ups neck work putting the jet, this, you know, straightening out your punches for you. There's, there's, in, in, the, in the first six months to a year of a, box, of a young boxer's life, there's almost no actual fighting. Uh -huh. Limited sparring, controlled sparring, knowing what punches are coming. When, you wouldn't put that young man into the ring to, to, to demonstrate boxing yet, but he's a boxer, he's training. Level one. And I think many of us are in a rush to skip over these levels and get into the uh, um, into the fight, for, and why that is is perhaps a deeper a deeper uh, issue than uh, I study Shaolin or I study Tai Chi or I study uh, uh, Arnis. It's more like there's a fear of seeming weak and a fear of losing. Yes. And the greatest uh, philosophies of, of mankind tell us to 
to confront this fear and know it and not to deny it. I